Okie dokie. I think I'm live. Yep, here we are. We're live. Super. It's uh, about a minute to the start time. We'll see if we can't get a few more people tuned in. Get settled. And we will begin. How's everyone's day going so far? It's been pretty rainy in my area for the past, let's say two weeks. So I think this piece is going to inspire the sun to come out. That's what I'm hoping. Sort of like the opposite of a rain dance. If a bunch of people, whether it's in Ontario or just all over the place, if we're all thinking sunny, happy thoughts, we're thinking flowers, we're thinking sunshine, if we all do it all at the same time, maybe it'll work and we'll get some beautiful sunny weather coming up. Enough of the rain. I'm sick of the rain. Welcome to Mark and Joanna. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, the live chat is, uh, is a great place to ask questions, uh, maybe shout out. Uh, let me know where you're from. Let me know if you've done a tutorial here with me before or maybe in Zoom. Uh, let me know of any special events happening today in your life. Maybe it's your birthday. I'd love to hear. Hi, Jared. You're always ready. Super. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's time to start. Let's start. Um, my name is Chris, if we've never painted together before. And the title of our painting today is Let the Sun Shine In. We are thinking positively that the beautiful May sunny weather is going to start soon. <laughs> Enough of the rain. Uh, welcome, Joanna from Pennsylvania. Awesome. I'm in Ontario. Southwestern Ontario, myself. Um, I'm not specifically in the Durham region, but that doesn't stop me from being a host for them. All right, yeah, we're getting more people logged in. Awesome. Uh, let's go over the supplies and then we will get to painting. And remember that this is, is live, but you do have the power to pause, rewind even, to hear something again. So if there's something you needed to go grab or something you needed to do, you can always hit pause at any point, even to like catch up a little bit or take a little breather. You are able to pause the live. Who would have thought? So supplies, let's just scooch this guy over here for a sec. I've got my watercolor paper. Um, this is a brand that I like to use a lot. It's available in many, many places, such as Michael's, such as even Walmart. Canson uh, XL watercolor paper. It's just a nice medium quality for a medium price is what I always say. You could do this painting on canvas even. You could, or maybe um, mixed media paper. If you don't have any watercolor paper, that would work just fine. Uh, over here, I have a pencil and eraser. We're going to use those very, very briefly. Pencil, eraser, any any kind of pencil, any eraser. Um, over here, I have my watercolors. You could adapt this to be um, like any medium. What about in acrylics or some beautiful colored pencils or pastels or, or alcohol markers? You could adapt this to anything you want to do. I've got some watercolors here. Um, these are called Paint Stones by Beam. Beam Paints is a Canadian owned, women owned indigenous company. They make these wonderful little paint stones that I've just kind of customized my own little palette here. And I've got my Mei Liang set from Amazon. Nothing fancy. You're not gonna see me bust out any very professional watercolors just for funsies. I've got a few paintbrushes here. Um, 
I'm not big on sizes. I just go kind of like a bigger one, a medium E1 and a smaller one. We're not doing like huge areas of watercolor. So I don't need any really big, big brushes today. So something like that. You could potentially do this whole thing with just like one brush, as long as that one brush you have has a bit of a pointy tip. So you can do, you know, smaller details or like lettering. You could do this with one paintbrush. I have my water for my watercolors and my little bit of paper towel to dry my brush. I do have some black and some white materials that are not watercolor. So this is really mixed media. A lot of my pieces involve maybe a little bit of white acrylic or white ink, maybe a little black pen kind of thing. So um, I've got white acrylic paint just from the dollar store or a white uh, paint pen. Love a good paint pen. That's for the white dots in the seeds of the flowers. And then for black options, I've got just like a knockoff Sharpie from Amazon or a black paint pen to do those little black details. You could use the black watercolor in your watercolor set. That would be okay. I've got some black there. But as for the white in a watercolor set, it's not opaque enough to do what we want it to do today, which is paint on top of color. The white is not white enough. So that's why I busted out some acrylic or some paint pen. And then as far as optional supplies, later on for the lettering, I have a ruler just to help me make some straight lines, but you could eyeball that or use the edge of, use the edge of something straight, like the edge of this, um, this pad of paper is straight. The edge of a Kleenex box over here, that's straight. Just anything straight to help you do some straight lettering. Rulers optional. And then I have some, just some painter's tape, masking tape. If you wanted to have a white border, a crisp white border around your work, uh, you would put some tape around that first or to tape your paper down to a surface use that. Um, I think I'll skip that today. I'll just have the painting kind of go almost right to the edge there. So we'll get started and keeping in mind that you can hit pause anytime you want. I like to take my paper out of my paper pad, but that's up to you. You can keep it inside the pad or inside oh, a sketchbook or Maybe like a travel journal type thing. Let me get organized here. Messy, messy. How can we go a little higher? Let's see if we can't go a little higher. Well, the water jar is out of the picture. That's okay. That's not important. With the, with the sunflowers, with actually the whole thing, you don't need to do exactly what I'm doing. If you want to choose a different color or a different arrangement, a different number of flowers, different font, let's say, um, a completely different flower, you want to do daisies instead, or do you want to make up your own flowers? I encourage that. I want to see it. I want everyone's artwork to be different. Okay, even my own painting today will be different from my original painting. Um, you're sitting next to a friend, perhaps their painting, I want it to be completely different from yours. I want to see everyone's different personalities coming out in their work. So I, I don't really want like a carbon copy. I'm just here to inspire you to do your own thing. We're going to use our pencils first just to draw the middles of the sunflowers. So I've got one, two, three, four, six, and eight. I've got eight. You don't have to have eight. And I'm going to put one like top, bottom, and three down each side. But that's just me. You might have a smaller piece of paper. You want to have enough room for your lettering. Maybe you just want to do like six instead of eight. You could do whatever you want. I'm just going to draw 
you know, sort of a circle. If it ends up being more oval, that's fine. And you could draw it bigger than mine, smaller, um, different positions. Maybe you want, um, you know, this orientation. Ooh, let the sun shine in and the flowers are like that. Ooh, thoughts, ideas. Yeah, if you do have something nearby that is circular and you want to trace it, you can, but I think the, the more organic circles are cooler. Yeah, mine, they're not in a perfect line either. You could stagger them a little bit. They could be like nearer each other and even touch or overlap, that would be okay. Okay, so, well, with the glare of the light, yeah, I think you could see them. I've got eight circles. Yeah, that one's, yeah, that one's kind of oval. I mean, maybe that one's my best circle, but that's all we need to do the pencil for. The rest of it, we're just going to wing it. We're just going to do it with the paint. Perhaps later, if you want to do your lettering in pencil, you could do that. Definitely. But I'm just going to set that aside for now. Let's get the paint going. Can I get a higher angle and get some of this paint in the shot? A little bit. Ooh, don't you fall on me. Um, yeah, so I'll probably use a little bit of both sets. I'm not, I'm not a snob that I have to only use one brand. Okay. Keep in mind, you can do any colors anywhere at any, any time. So I'm going to do my sunflower middles, yellow, brown, maybe orange. If you feel strongly about blue middles, purple middles, you go for it. I want to see those. They're going to look awesome. Um, any color anywhere. So I'm going to do some yellow to start. A little bit of yellow. Get some water. Mix it around. It could be um, darker than mine, lighter than mine. It could go outside the lines. You don't have to stay in the lines. What if you accidentally, whoops, I accidentally went out the line. That's fine. No one's going to notice that when we have petals. I'm going to do a few yellow. Maybe one more yellow. Let's go. Let's go here. It doesn't matter that they're next to each other even. There, I did three yellows. Brown is nice. Lighter yellow, maybe like a orangey yellow. Ochre. Ochre is a nice color. I'm going to do this kind of a, I think this is like a sienna. I'd call this sienna. Yep, simple as that. Little water, swirl it around, paint a circle. Don't need to think about it too much. What about, this was more of like a cad yellow. I could do lemon yellow instead. I could do this lovely orange. I could do blue. I could do purple. Oh, look at that lovely, like a yellow orange. Now, the thought might have crossed one or two person's minds, but Chris, sunflowers are more of a fall flower, more summer. Yeah, I know. It just felt like the phrase sunshine went with sunflower, so I chose sunflowers. That's okay. It doesn't have to be sunflower season. So we've got some middles here. We are going to do petals on all of our middles. So let's look a little closer here. 
I've got yellow, orange, red, um, even some purple petals, different, um, different shades of all these colors too. So I could have some very pale, 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 pale pink, and then a bit more stronger pink, all within the same flower even. That's fine. You can have um, maybe a different color scheme in mind to match perhaps some decor in your house. Um, if you feel strongly about greens and blues around, that would be very cool to see. Or just make up a, a rainbow of colors, every flower different, like literally anything. I'm going to start with maybe some lemon yellow, like a lighter yellow. Why not? The petals do not have to be consistent with each other. Even on the same flower, they don't all have to be the same. It could be some skinnier ones, some fatter ones, some longer ones, pointy ones versus round ones, any at all. So it's up to you whether you want to kind of start in the middle and, and kind of work outward. That's a very light yellow. Can you see it? I think the camera can see it. Or work from the outside in. And it's okay if some of your petals go onto your middle a little bit. That's fine too. They could be a little bit um, like wrinkly, crinkly petals. They could have gaps between them or no gaps between them. Um, curled at the end or straight. Thick, thin. And we are going to add um, other petals between these petals to make them really full and, I don't know, luscious. The petals, yeah, mine aren't even the same size, length, they're different. There we go. I can't see two petals on there that are the exact same. Some are lighter, darker. It's okay to have dark patches and light patches within the same petal. That'll happen. All right, I'm gonna do, I'll do that lemon yellow again, but on a different, uh, I'll go down, I'll go down here. You can have some that are maybe bent. Sometimes petals bend or curl. That would give it a lot more character, personality. Um, maybe some petals are kind of raggedy on the ends. Maybe they're a little bit torn. That happens. They're not all smooth and perfect all the time. There's two, two of the eight, <coughs> pardon me. Um, what about, so that was like a lemon yellow, so a little bit lighter. What about a, a cad, cad yellow? Let's go, do, 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 let's go up here. Any order, you could do a completely different flower right now than me.
I know I've talked about, you know, you can choose a different color, you can choose a different arrangement. What about choosing a different phrase? I said you could choose a different font, but it could be a completely different phrase. Think about that. Maybe you have a, a favorite positive phrase. You could definitely do that instead. Um, let's go do another cad yellow one here. Sure, why not? There are some sunflowers out there that are predominantly red in their petals. You could do a fully red sunflower. And let's go with, um, I'll go with this kind of lovely light orange, yellow orange. Let's go, let's go here. And if your middles are still a little wet, mine are pretty dry, but if, say, they were still a little wet, and when you put the petal on, some of the middle color bled into it, that's cool. That actually gives you, like, free shading without even doing anything. Like a gradient effect for free. Yeah, so don't worry if the, the middle color bleeds into your petal color at all. Where else do I want this color? over here even though yeah even though the middle is the same color the middle and the petals can be the same color Pretty cute, bright, cheerful. And what will be my next color? Um, I mean, there's nothing against having pink or red as like my first color. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Let's do this lovely light pink. Let's see what that's like. Or metallic paint, if you have any metallics around. Ooh, that's really light. I might mix a little color up in my lid. Get two colors going. Medium pink. Let's try that. Let's just see. Oh, yeah, that's better. The first one was too light. You couldn't even see it. Better or 
straight angle. Let's get this last one pink or anything you want. It's already looking happy, welcoming, um, perfect, maybe beginner painting. Maybe you've never worked with watercolors before. This is going to be perfect for you. Gorgeous. Yeah, some of our first flowers, the petals we did, those are already dry. Yeah, because as we work kind of around the page, some of the first things we did will dry. So then in that way, we can keep going without really needing a drying break. All right. Yeah. So check out some of the first flowers you did. You should have one, maybe two fully dry ones. You can kind of look at your page on an angle. If you see glossiness, that's wetness. If you see just matte finish, that is dry. So I can work on this guy. He's fully dry. We're gonna do petals in between the petals we just did. So maybe your petals are further apart than mine and you have lots of room. Maybe your petals are tightly packed and you'll only be able to see like a little tiny little tip of a little petal between. Um, but just to make them look more full and healthy, I don't know. <laughs> so let's look at some examples here I've got orange, reds, pinks, purples. Um, maybe you might call that more of like a burgundy than a red red, red orange, anything you want. And yeah, some, some might end up being kind of light. Some of them end up being a little dark. I've got multiple colors within one flower or stick with like traditional colors if you want. Yeah, so most of my flowers have like three, if not four colors. Now I might use, I'll use a slightly smaller brush. Let's go with this guy, a little bit of a medium brush. Um, yeah, this one's dry. So maybe some of the same colors we've already been using, even brown as a petal color or completely new colors. I'm going to use some cad yellow. So this was lemon, but if I use cad in between, it's different. It's still yellow, but it's slightly different yellow. Is it different enough for the camera to see is the question. So the in-between petals, they don't have to be all the same. They don't have to be the same as these original petals. They could be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, thinner. There really is no rules here. Um, and I might do, you know, some cad and then I'll do some orange, pink. I'll just kind of skip around this flower. It's all right if they overlap. They could overlap each other. Okay, there's some cat in there. Maybe I want to throw some uh, pink in there because I feel like it. Let's do some of the pinks. Yeah, if, uh, if randomness is not your thing and you prefer order, you can have a certain pattern, yellow, pink, red. 
but I just kind of fill it in as I as I want. Uh, maybe some darker. So some are thinner, thicker, longer, shorter. We're going to add like wisps of other colors on top of that too. We're going to add details in the middles. It's not just going to be like that. We're going to add black. We're going to add white. Okay. Focus your camera. Focus on this. Let's dry even as we speak. Let's look at another dry one. I mean, most of mine are already dry now. You just have to keep working on filling in all the gaps of all the other flowers in any order, any order, any colors. Yeah, I'll go down here. Now this part is kind of, um, Relaxing, peaceful, you're just filling in gaps. You don't really have to watch the screen. In fact, if you're if you're watching this on replay, not live, you could potentially just mute me. Put on your favorite show and just fill in all these petals at your own pace, watching your favorite show. Some of these gaps are real teeny tiny, but I still squeeze something in there in the gap. How about like a magenta color or really anything you want to do? Purple? one yeah they just look um richer fuller than than the ones i haven't added to let's do i'm going to do something wild i'm going to add some some blue some green just because I, I want to Let's do, let's do this guy. Maybe he needs some blue petals. But who's ever seen blue petals on a sunflower? Not till just now.
blue, I also said green. What about a beautiful emerald green petal? Yeah, and if you look if you look up close on my flowers, there's lots of bits that I've accidentally overlapped some other petals. Maybe it got a little bit on my middle. My middle's not even a circle, more like an egg. This one's an egg. That's all right. That is okay. What about ultramarine? Yeah, that's a unique color combination. I just had to try it. What about, I could make a few of them more traditional in that they're just yellows and oranges. Nancy said, thank you for using blue. Why not? Why not have a blue sunflower? What about, oh, I could do some brown or like a ochre. I'll do some of this, um, like a sienna. Mother's Day is coming up. You could turn this design into like a Mother's Day card. Hmm. Just thinking, thinking out loud. Make a little mini version, put it on a card. Some different phrase, maybe something about a mother's love. Hmm. Any kids out there listening? Ideas? What about a lovely, I definitely want some reds going on at some point. Let's get some orangey reds, pinkish reds.
Mm, yes, Jared has definitely uh, been a longtime fan, and I know he's taken some of my suggestions and made cards. Yeah, birthday card, someone's birthday this month. Put some sunflowers on it. Put a cute phrase. Pink, maybe. Yeah, that's a nice color combo. Some red, some pink, some orange. Um, yeah, and look look up close at mine. They're not all perfect. They're all wrinkly on the edges, blobby some of them. But no one's looking at your work this close. They're looking at it, you know, if you hang it on the wall from across the room. And who doesn't love a homemade card? All right, let's keep going. Uh, get some, like one, two, three, I got three, three more. Let's do maybe more purples. I gotta get some more purples involved. Yeah, this one is turning out completely different from this one, but I did warn you and I knew going into it myself, I wouldn't make it exactly the same because that's boring. I think I'm gonna gift this painting today to my Opa. My Opa had to recently move into a home, so the walls are pretty boring. He needs some beautiful sunflowers and color on the wall, so I think I'll bring this and visit him tomorrow. Well, that's pink. Oh, that's cute. Very warm. What about um, <laughs> just a bunch of greens? Sure. Try different different greens. Some beautiful lime greens. Some beautiful emerald green. 
it might end up looking like leaves, but I don't really care. Yeah, I mean, the green, the all green kind of comes across as just a bunch of leaves. Actually, with the, with the brown middle and then the yellow, it kind of looks like a black-eyed Susan. One of my faves, so cool. One more. Oh, got two more. fun. We do this last one. No two are alike on mine, and that's okay. It's also okay if you stuck with the traditional sunflower colors and you only did yellows and oranges and maybe a little brown, maybe a little red. I'm happy with that. I've got a little, little drippy spill there, a little smudge there. That's okay. We're going to add some splashies later. So it's okay if you have a splashy or two, a drippy, that'll blend right in. It will. Yeah, there's some, some different uh, color combinations. 
Well, thanks for your kind words, Nancy, Nancy, and also Anne. Yeah, variety is, what is it? The spice of life. Have a little variety. All right. Yes, yeah, some of them are drying. Some of them are fully dry. Let's add, um, let's add the darker circles within the circles. Maybe, maybe you haven't noticed there's a darker bit within each middle and then later we'll add dots of black and white um, most if not all of my middles are brown that doesn't mean yours have to be brown doesn't mean mine have to be brown if you want a more traditional look in the middles uh, go with brown or maybe some darker orange but Nothing's stopping me from doing a blue middle, which is literally what I'm about to do. Just to try it. Oh, it looks a little greenish. But that's fine. Because I'm doing blue on top of yellow. Just maybe like that. On the camera, it looks brownish. Eh. If you end up doing all brown ones, that's fine too. Maybe a lovely red, maybe a lovely purple. And again, they don't have to be all perfect circles. Mine can be a little bit ovally at times. And if you're still working on your petals, you can hit, uh, hit pause. Hit pause, catch up, do what you need to do at your own pace. Or maybe you're, you're ahead of me. Maybe you have less flowers in your composition. What about, what about pink? What about pink? Ooh, that's rich. Any sizes, like like this one looks a little on the smallish side. This one definitely the bigger side. What do I have left? One more. I'm I'm gonna do green because because I can. Dark green, dark green. There, yeah, even with just that addition of the center, looking more uh, sunflowery. That's a word. Beautiful. We'll let those dry uh, before we add any little dotties. But what we can do in the meantime is I've got like a, a ring of color around each of the big circles, a ring of color. So I did choose a color that kind of went with the colors I chose. So this one has a lot of red. So I did a red ring here. Um, this one's a bit of a purpley ring around here, but you do you. So yeah, it kind of helps cover up the little areas that maybe some of the petal got onto the middle bit. It just kind of helps tidy it up a tiny bit, but not uh, not uh, it's not perfect. There still might be little imperfections that are visible. So go around, kind of like on the pencil line, if you can still see your pencil lines, and it doesn't have to be like a particular thickness or be perfectly round. Like that. There's some darker green. Kind of hide some of the little imperfections. And with the same color, the same color that I did the ring, I'm going to do some 
Okay, camera, you got to work with me here. Camera, I should name him. Cam, cam the camera. Cam, pay attention. No, Cam, come on. Focus on this. Focus, focus. There we go. He gets distracted. With the same color I did the ring, I'm going to do some flicks onto the petals as if the petals had maybe some creases in them or, or you know, petals are sometimes textured. They have like lines down them and it doesn't have to be every petal. It doesn't have to be all the same um, like thickness. It could be double. You could have a, a twofer on one petal. Could be long, could be short. They don't have to be all smooth and perfect. So there's some lines. It's again not on every petal. I've got some double, I got some thick. I've got wispy tips, watery, darker, lighter. Yeah. Oh, Cam's paying attention now. Good. Good, Cam. Uh, scrunchy Mama Bear, love the name. Uh, likes the style technique. Yeah, it's um, casual. Casual is the word. We're not uptight. We're not, uh, we're not sticklers for perfection here. We're just bamming some colors, happy colors, making a happy painting. We don't have to have perfection. Let me do, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go around. Let's do over here, like a darker brown ring and then some, some creases. I'm, I'm not one for realism. That's not my bag, but Fun stuff, beginner-friendly stuff, that's my bag. Little flicks, flick, flick, flick. I'll just keep going around in this kind of clockwise motion. Let's do some blue. And again, this isn't like the final, final, final look. We're going to add some black, some white, more flicks, dots. Let's go pink, let's go pinky orange. We'll see. Yeah, if you are enjoying my uh, art style, kind of easygoing way of doing it, uh, or my, my hosting style, if you're enjoying that, there's so many already loaded videos on our YouTube channel right as we speak uh, that you could do anytime. You don't have to wait for the next live with me 
to uh, have a little creative break. Uh, scrunchy Mama Bear was mentioning the snowman one. That was a good one. We customized the snowmen to our own families, even pets. It's not snowing now, so maybe the snowman one's a bad example, but lots of other ones. Um, today is May the 4th. It's Star Wars Day. There is four or five different Star Wars tutorials on our channel already uploaded. You could do uh, like a Star Wars theme later today or later this week. There's a very cute R2-D2 one in watercolor that I taught. Flick, 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 flick. And is, and is so kind to me and thinks I'm very relaxing. Lovely to hear. I'm going to do pink. Oh, that's a bit thick. That's okay. Thick, thin. Getting there. They're getting more oomph. They're looking a little more popping. Yeah, if you look at this guy, no outline, no little flicks on the petals compared to the rest. He's looking a little dull. He's looking flat. Let's snazz him up with some orange. Hmm. Yeah, if you felt strongly about adding another color, flicking in another, another color, I can't stop you. I might do a little of that myself. Let's go with a little. Mm, that just looks the same. That's a good one. Here's a good one. We'll do some orange in here. There's no limit to the amount of colors you can add to each flower. So I added a little orange to that one. Maybe some over here. Flick, flick, flick. Again, doesn't have to be every, every flower petal. What about some purple? That's a little dark. That's all right. Didn't mean for it to be that dark. What else needs a little more? Maybe this guy, a little orange, maybe?
know I'm going to be still adding black, white, so I think that's a good amount for me for now. But you do you. Keep adding colors if you want. All right. Ooh. Crack the old knuckles. Sorry if that is one of those nails on a chalkboard sounds for anyone. The cracking of the knuckles. All right. Let me do... You brushes are crazy. I'm thinking about, do I want to do the leaves and vines next? I'm thinking yes. Yeah, I think that'd be a good next bit to do. Um, they're kind of stylized. I know that sunflowers aren't on vines. I know they're on like a, like a stem, like a stalk. They're straight. I just felt some wispy vines going around, traveling around would be better. So maybe these aren't necessarily sunflower stems or sun, sunflower leaves. We could pretend we've made some other leaves and vines involved. It doesn't have to be sunflowers per se. Let's do a oh, medium brush. Yeah. Um, I mean, traditionally, stems and vines are green, leaves are green but you can do any colors you want. What about, you know, it would look really sharp with all these colored petals. If you do all your leaves and vines black, that could be a, a style choice, black, to make these really pop, just as a thought. Or you could do maybe kind of a combination of blues in amongst the greens, some yellows in amongst the greens, anything you want. I'm going to, I'll stick with the kind of traditional greens in this case, but know that in my heart, I wanted to try something a little different. Maybe the next, next version. Um, yeah, so in between flowers and maybe reaching into the corners, just filling white space, any amount of leaves and vines. You could have less than me or more. Um, I do still want to keep most of this area clear for the text. So you can have some coming towards the middle, but mostly we're trying to fill in like out here. Any like reach, reach something up to here, wherever you can reach. I'm going to do like a lighter green plus a little emerald green. So like two distinct greens that you have. Maybe you only have one green in your watercolor set. Use that. Plus you could add like a little blue into it to make it more of an emerald color. Let's see if this is the green I want to use today. Moisten it. Get it really going. I'm going to need a bunch. Where should we go? I'm going to go, let's start up here. Just any old viney shape, twisting, curving, wherever it wants. It could be thicker, thinner than mine. And then it kind of goes like under the flower and then to get a second color in there I just take some of this emerald and just kind of dab it into the green you just did you could do little bits or a lot just to get two tones in there you can let it kind of spread where it wants to and then I'll grab some more light green make a make a leaf it could be like a little curly leaf, it could be a wide leaf. Sunflower leaves are quite wide in area. So there's some of the light green, maybe I'll dab a little of the emerald in there too while it's wet. Maybe on this side I'll do a little curly cue, like a little, like a little tendril. Vines have these little 
little tendrils that kind of reach out and hook onto things. Still not saying that sunflowers are on vines. <laughs> I know they are not on vines. Um, what about a leaf going over here? And then, yeah, I even have, if you look at this one, I've got random, this isn't even attached to anything. It's just two leaves and a little curly. Here's just a random leaf on its own. Here's one. Doesn't have to make sense. I might even do extra viney lines just to try it out. Like a double vine. I'm not mad at that. What about another curly? That's kind of cute. Yeah. Let's continue just connecting, filling in space all the way around. Any colors. Light leaves, dark leaves. Yeah, I like the look of the extra, extra vine on a vine. Turn out kind of cool. Let's do some little tendrils, little curlies. Yeah. Could even be just, you know, you want to put a leaf, you know, here, here's a leaf sticking out from behind this flower. Why not? Doesn't have to be attached to anything. Or just a leaf on its own. Just to fill in some space. Oh yeah. Blue would also look nice, kind of dabbled 
into some of the leaves or vines, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow would look nice too. But why stop there? Dabbing some pink or orange or purple. Yes, yeah, tying it all together, kind of creating a frame. That's what we want. Oh, there's a bit where I forgot a petal. Whoops. Missing petal, enter the vine. And you could definitely spend a lot more time going around, really fine tuning all of your leaves and curls, but I'm just kind of whipping it on there. You don't have to go as quickly. With, with practice comes the speed. Uh, Nancy asks, what is the best paper for watercolors? So um, there are many, many, many options out there. Uh, personally, I don't go for the best of the best watercolor paper because I like, to, I like to paint too much. So I want bulk. I want cheap. So that's why I go for the, the brands that I go for here. Canson XL. Well, that's upside down. Um, but... Many people love Arches, Arches watercolor paper. It is a French brand. It is expensive. Um, I have used it. It is a beautiful, beautiful watercolor paper. And, um, oh, there's so many others. So many watercolor papers out there. But uh, for, for my purposes, I go with the, the, the medium. So I don't um, always feel like I have to do a good painting because the paper I used cost three, four dollars just for the one sheet. Who needs that pressure? But even when I have like a like a painting mistake or like an experiment that didn't turn out well, I still keep that painting. And I will later use it for collage. Any paintings that you have that you, you know, don't want to display or just didn't work out, keep them just in a big old folder and chop them up for collage later on. It's so much fun. Turn it into birthday cards. Yeah, trying to use up all, all the white space you have out here. Really reach into the corners with leaves or little tendrils.
Yeah, some of them darker, lighter. That's all right. Thicker, thinner. Getting there, moving, moving back to where I started from. Let's go. That. So I've gone all the way around, uh, but I'm still going to add um, some other little, you know, leaves kind of scattered around or even like here's a little curly out on its own just to fill in any other little gaps. Anything at all. Maybe even a, a fallen petal. Could do that for sure. Where else? Even a leaf tucked behind a flower. Mm. Yeah, you can have a few things kind of going towards the middle, but not too, too wild. Yeah, if you um, felt like adding maybe like veins of leaves, you could do that, like a little, a little flick down the middle of the leaf gives it a little bit more texture, I guess, uh, movement, a little flick, flick. Gave it a little bit more detail. What else? I'll do a couple more little curlies or something. Mm
Yeah, I'm quite happy with the amount. Yeah, we can always add more later. We're also going to add splashes too, which will help. Okay, yeah, that's looking awesome. Very full and lush. All right, um, let's do like the the black and the white on our sunflower middles and petals. So some options for the white that I had that I showed earlier, some just dollar store acrylic paint, uh, paint pen, even like a white out pen, believe it or not, white out pen. There's also a product by uh, Dr. PH Martins called Bleed Proof White. That's, that would be a good opaque white thing to use. What about like a jelly pen, white jelly pen? Anything like that. So those are my white options. And then for black, like a black, um, just a black pen, like a, maybe a micron pen or just a regular pen, black Sharpie, black paint pen. Um, or the actual black of the watercolor set, because you can get a nice rich blackness from the watercolor black, but you can't get a nice whiteness from watercolor white. So I think I'll do, I'll do black first. I'll do the black first. I'm going to use my paint pen. You got to shake them. You got to kind of get it going. This is really going to add a lot of nice character to our sunflower middles. So I put some black dots around like the big circle. And they're not all perfect. Some of them look more like dashes than dots. So around there. And then I make a little mini circle inside the, in this case, a brown. So there's a little mini circle of black in there. But you do you if you want to do more of a scattered black seeds throughout. And then later we'll do white around the inner and then white in the very middle. So it's kind of like a ring of black, then white, then black, then white. But that's just how I chose to do it. You can do any arrangement of black and white dots in the middles, maybe scattered throughout because that's more realistic. Mine's more stylized. So it could be on that circle. It could be on the darker ring we made. Just keep it kind of random. I definitely want some of them to be like touching, overlapping, and then I'll make a little mini circle. <laughs> okay, it doesn't look like much yet. When we get some white in there, it'll help too. You could have more or less than me. It's already looking a little more sunflowery. are different. Some have tiny little inner circles or bigger. More dots, less dots.
we go. Like, I mean, that one's off center. I'm not bothered. Okay, I'm not quite done with the black just yet. I'm going to add some black flecks. So, um, yeah, so let's look at this one. Same as when we're doing the colored flicks along some of the petals, we can add some black flicks and then later some white flicks or, or neither or one or the other. You don't have to. If you're digging how the, how the colored flicks look and you don't want to cover those up. But I think it adds a little something, just little flicks. And I didn't even add some to this one. What the heck? That one got missed. I'm adding it now. Flick, flick, flick. There we go. Yeah, same kind of thing. Flicking from the outside, or sorry, inside outwards. Could be one, could be two. Doesn't have to be every petal. Just a few. Just adds a little bit of darkness, a little bit depth. Mine are not all the same length. Some are curved, some are straight. <coughs> flick, flick, flick. Long, short. <coughs> As if these are like the, the darkest creases because they're deepest. <coughs> Pardon me. I do have lozenges on standby. Yeah, I think it adds just more depth. Flick, flick, flick the black. Yeah, no one is looking at, you know, oh, this petal looks a little lumpy or this one is a little weird. No, they're looking at the whole painting as a whole. Like, oh, look at that little blobby. No one notices that. Cute. So I think that's it for the black for me. You can certainly add more in other places you might want it. Get my white going. Dub, dub, dub. Same kind of thing with the white. I'm going to do white dots around that smaller circle and then a few white dots right in the very middle. So it's sort of like a target, black and white target of dotties. Um, we could use your acrylic paint and a small brush, a whiteout pen. Dot, dot, dot. It's not a perfect circle. There's my first one. You could have more or less. You could have some rogue crazy ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
if some of the black and white overlap, no problem. Cute. So I've got all those dotted middles, but I'll also do some flicks of white on the petals. Flick, flick, any any petal anywhere, any amount, overlapping any of the existing colors. Doesn't have to make sense. does work a little better against a darker petal, but I'll still do some on the yellow or a lighter color. But they're definitely more visible on a, a darker petal. If you have a choice, go for the darker one. Super. So, yeah, apart from the, like, the little splashes, that's it for the background. Uh, we'll do the lettering in a moment. Um, before we do the lettering, I would like to show you some upcoming events with me uh, for the rest of the month. And then maybe I'll show you a sneak peek of something I've been working on today. A work in progress, if you will. Um, so coming up next Thursday, so I generally teach on Thursdays, May 11th, uh, Mother's Day is coming up, guys. So this would be a cool thing to do on like a card or something. I also have a more themed image in mind for Mother's Day. There it is. It is another watercolor. There we go. Let's get this in the shot. So I called it Our Love Crosses Galaxies. And I don't think this camera does it justice. It's, and, and the glare of the plastic, beautiful blues and purples and the galaxy kind of theme of stars and a little bit of mist. You take a toothbrush, do a little misting. And then like a, I made up the constellation. It's made up. Uh, so this one is on Zoom next Thursday. Tickets are on the website. Um, and then every ticket holder gets the full video recording to keep forever. So even if you can't make it to the live Zoom, you still get the recording to do the following day or the next week or, or any, any time. Tickets on the website, artistpalatedurham.com. After that, the following Thursday, May 18th, I often do two-in-one events. So this one's also watercolors, two-in-one event. So you get to do a chameleon and a gecko, and I called it Happy Lizard Splash. Two events for the price of one. In one Zoom, we're going to do both of these. You do get printable, traceable outlines before the event. So your lizards are pre-traced before we start the Zoom. And we do both of them together. Tickets on the website, that's May 18th. 
Happy Lizards Splash. This guy's name is Leo. Leo's the chameleon. Chamele Leo. -ian. Leo. And this one's Lizzie. And I will show you one more from May. Um, I've been doing an animal artist series lately. We've done Pablo Picasso. We've done Vincent Van Gogh coming up at the end of May, May 25th. We're going to do Frida Kahlo, the famous Mexican painter, Frida Kahlo, but now envisioned as a cow. We're going to do that one in acrylics, May 25th. Tickets on the website. And the, the past animal artist ones are also on our website, available as tutorials uh, that you can purchase anytime. I will show you one more thing before we do our lettering. Uh, it's a work in progress. I have been working on this today. It's not done. Um, it's like maybe half done. Um, I wanted to do a lion. So I drew this. So this will be available as the printable traceable outline before the event. And then this is a work in progress. So I'm doing the kind of neurological art style on this lion face. So I'm going to keep going with my black marker or black pen and fill out the rest of these so that it matches the top. And then I'll probably add even more watercolor to some of these sections. So this is a sneak peek. It's not finished yet. Um, not sure what date it is. Haven't even come up with a title. So look for that one, probably early June. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. We're gonna add, I'm gonna add more colors in these little sections. Maybe make it look more stained glassy, stained glass. We'll see what I do. Okay, this is nice and dry. I'm not scared of smudging it. I'm gonna bring back that ruler. This uh, ruler is optional just to help me make some lines to put the lettering on, or you could just wing it or get something else that's straight to draw some lines very lightly. I've got five words, but that's only if you want to do this phrase, let the sun shine in. Do any phrase you want. Put happy Mother's Day, mom, put, I love you, put like literally anything you want to do, any positive phrase, maybe a funny phrase. Um, and it's not too late if you thought of a phrase, but it's like big, it's not too late to go this way and do your words this way. It's not too late. It is very easily turned into a horizontal composition. So I'm gonna do five lines for my five words and they're short words so I don't really need a lot of ruler action here I'll just do little short lines I'm doing my lines light so that I can easily erase them and they don't have to be evenly spaced but if you want them evenly spaced then you can measure uh, If, yeah, if you want them to be like perfectly level, you can certainly me measure it so that they're all perfectly level. Just a guideline. Okay, I did them super light. I don't know if the camera can even really pick up on them. I think so definitely washes it out, but they're there. Five little lines for my five word phrase, but you do you. Uh, font wise, I'm going to do kind of a mix of like chunky capital serif little font here, a little bit of, um, you could call that calligraphy. You could call that um, cursive writing, however you want to call that. I alternated it, but you can do it one consistent font. You could do your own thing, bubble letters, all caps, whatever you feel like. I'm going to use a small brush. Makes sense. Again, any colors. 
I'm going to be wild. I'm going to do completely different colors than this. This is, I stuck with red and orange to kind of go with these, but I've got all these colors to work with. Any colors. So this particular word, let, I did like all caps with little serifs, little footies on the letters. Uh, but you do you. Get this ruler out of here. I kind of like to start with the middle letter, the E in this case, and then do the L, then do the T. But that's just me because I like to kind of plan, make sure I have enough room, especially if I'm doing long words. If I'm doing a long word, I would definitely start with the middle. Yeah, this particular font has the little footies and then it has some bits that are thick, some bits that are thinner. And he's got like a little, there's a little cross bit there down at the bottom. So there's my E. But you could do any lettering you like. Um, you could pencil the placement of your letters before you do it in paint. If you want to be extra sure you'll have enough room. Or if you're brave or, or practiced, well-practiced, just go for it. Yeah, with practice comes confidence, speed. You make it look so easy. Well, let's just practice. Yeah, believe me, I have, I got like a whole folder on the desk over there of all of my, not failures, my practices. There you go, let, it's a, it's an easy word because there's no curves, it's chunky, angular. Let, let me do, mm -hmm, what color, purple, I'm gonna do purple. Which purple, this purple. So I am gonna do a different font for the the, but you can do the blocky letters if you like. Um, again, I could start with the middle letter, the H, and I am. So again, there's some bits of this letter, these letters that have thicker bits, thinner bits, sort of thin on the up, upstroke, and then thicker on the down, kind of traditional in that way, but uh, you do you. It's a little chunkier than I wanted, but that's all right. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. Yep, 
Yep, yep, I'm good with that. What about a lovely... Uh, I'm going to go with this kind of magenta-y color. I mean, these, these words are nice because they're nice and short. It's easy to figure out which is the middle letter. I'm going to do the U of sun before I do the other letters. If you've been enjoying this video, this tutorial, don't forget to like the video, share it, maybe subscribe. When you subscribe, then you're notified of when we go live. I do believe tomorrow we're having another live event with one of our newest hosts, Anna, and she's going to paint a watercolor snake. So Anna is, uh, is new. So let's show her some support and watch her, her first tutorial tomorrow. And she's doing like more of a, uh, more of a realism style with her snake. I might have to try that myself. I will definitely learn something because, as I said, that's not my forte, my strength, my strong suit, the realism. My S is a little weird. It's a little small. That's okay. I mean, the more I play with it, the weirder it ends up looking. That's all right. Let's we'll leave that S. That's that's passable. Let the sun shine. And I'm going to do mm -hmm, this lovely orange. Lovely orange. Yeah, nice short word. It's got the letter I right in the middle. I might as well do the middle first. Let the sun in. That makes sense. You could use since this is already a multimedia, mixed media piece, you could use markers or colored pencils to do your lettering.
an S. There are some bits of my letters that are darker, lighter as they dry. That's fine. I think it adds a nice, a nice quality to it. Let's wrap up the lettering here. Let's wrap up the painting in. Let the sun shine in. Yeah, similar, but different. Very happy. Hopeful. Hoping to let the sun shine in in the coming days. It's been so rainy. Um, yeah, if you have questions, um, now is a good time to ask them. In the chat, I pinned to the very top of the chat a link to our Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. Um, it's a small little community of us, um, you know, beginners, maybe a little intermediate, maybe a few experts. I don't even call myself an expert. I'm still kind of in that intermediate, I would say. Um, very supportive Facebook group. You can post this painting. I'd love to see it. You can post any of the past paintings you've done in the past in watercolors. I would love to see that. Um, or any original stuff you've done in watercolors. I'd love to see that too. So the link is in the chat and I pinned it to the top. Is the chat in, in this direction? Or is it, I'm reversed. I think, I think it's, no, it's gotta be this way. <laughs> I'm flipped. Um, yeah, what else can I tell you? Um, questions for me. Cindy said, looks so pretty. I agree. And I'm hoping that uh, yours at home, Cindy, turned out so pretty as well. Oh, I almost forgot to do my favorite part, guys. The splashing. That's a nice way to finish off. Okay, clear away anything that you don't want covered in paint including this painting, including the laptop. Um, move away your phone, move away anything you don't want covered in paint. If you do get some paint on the table, if you just wipe it up um, relatively soon, it won't stain. I'm gonna get my brush that has like a little bit bigger tip. Um, I do kind of wanna erase those lines, but I'll do that later. Um, this painting, I just did green splashes kind of around the edge to kind of go with the green leaves and vines. That looks nice, just green. What about if I went wild and did some other colors? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with some blue. Get some really watery paint going. It's all in my brush there. You can sort of aim where it lands. So if you wanted to do blue near the blue and pink near the pink, that could be an idea but it's gonna land where it wants to land. So sometimes I tap my brush on my finger and I get kind of little splatteds, little splashes. And then sometimes I just kind of hurl my brush at the page 
and then stop short. It's like I'm flicking a wand or something. And I get kind of bigger splashes. And you don't have to do the splashes. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, ooh, I don't want to do that. That's not my thing. Don't do it. I'll do another color. I'm going to do some pink. Get some really watery pink in my brush. Again, I could do some taps. Or I could do some flicks. Aggressive. Kind of focusing it where the flower color is. Let me do some green. I'm just using colors that I have in my composition already. It just makes sense. Yellow. Oh, got to have yellow. It's getting everywhere. That's all right. Yeah, it's not for everyone. You don't have to do these. I just really love it. What about orange? Oh, yeah. Okay. At some point, you just tell yourself to stop. That's enough. That's perfect. Well, let's get me a tissue. Get some of that up. That's better. Here we go. Um, yeah, any questions for me? Or you can ask them in the Watercolor Facebook group. I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I want to say thank you to those who uh, did opt for the tip option when you got your free ticket. Thank you so much for that. Uh, there is in the description down below uh, a link if you do want to send a little tip in appreciation. Another way to support your favorite online artists, uh, not just through tips, but if you want to get a ticket to one of the events that I showed you coming up later that also supports me. Tickets to my paid events. So I could put on more free events. Hmm? It goes both ways. All right, I don't see any questions rolling in. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of their evening and a lovely weekend. Take care. You're welcome, Anne. Thanks for joining me. All right. Take care, guys. Happy painting. Bye now.